flume coming out from here into the, the normal stream, which, which goes this way. And uh, here's a sample of where it is. This little tributary, which comes up, there's uh, scattered badlands up here. So what I did was actually I just decided to take some turbidity measurements upstream and downstream just to see how much that little section might be contributing to the turbidity directly downstream. And you can see um, there is some erosion from the uplands coming through the, the um, coming through these uh, trenches that the brink that's carved out by, by the water flow. And here's some ideas of what these uh, turbidity units mean. So 20 NTU after 1.7 inches of rainfall looks something like that. The stream level came up. This is going to be the exact same site. Usually baseline water, water flows or water level is going to be about less than one foot. At this section, here's zero rainfall. Turbidity is 0.4 NTU. Another one with pretty clean conditions, 0.72. Oh, this is 20 NTU after almost an inch of rain. And then this is pretty heavy rainfall. We have 3.68 inches. And we get around 40 uh, NTUs. And like I said, so these were, when I was actually there, um, our turbidimeter was, was getting readings upwards of Five, six hundred. Um, I think the highest was 900 NTUs, uh, so it's much higher than what we were actually able to see in person on site. Uh, most of those rainfalls occurred at two, three in the morning. Another thing useful with the data is we uh, plot these data points. You can take stream level and manual flow measurements that I collected, and it produces a, a stage discharge curve, which is a useful management tool that can allow us to. After enough data points, we collect enough data points, we can um, go down to the stream, take a simple stream level measurement, plot it on the curve, and have an idea of what the flow is. So this is kind of a preliminary discharge curve. Really takes um, much more data points to, for the accuracy to increase. And so some conclusions is uh, one of the things we saw is that the, the gas watershed is very dynamic. Um, there's a great response in rainfall, and we saw it in stream level, turbidity readings, and also in flow measurements. Um, from our GIS model, we can see where kind of the hot spots are, get a good idea of what the different sections of the watershed are doing. Um, and then from the soil samples, uh, I kind of went through that earlier. But the next question is, uh, so what do we do about it? And you know, one big concern is what is this turbidity, what is this erosion having on, what effects is it having on the view? Um, so one thing would be to design a study that brings it more to what the actual sediment um, quantity is that's making it out to the reef. Uh, also set up more monitoring points uh, to kind of get an idea what the um, what, what uh, erosion levels is from disturbed versus undisturbed areas. And then also to continue collecting baseline information so that as we start to do restoration, we can compare the baseline data and see uh, how effective this rest, rest, any restoration activities would be. And that's all, any questions?